Good morning, my name is Jacob Folger and I'm an artist sculptor and today we're going to make a sea, a sea lion and um, I just uh, did a video also earlier today on how to make a little miniature uh, turtle and one of the things I requested of the people that view, view the video is that they leave a comment telling me what kind of animal they would like me to do a uh, tutorial on making and uh, somebody uh, wanted me to make a sea lion so to do a sea lion so um, I'm working in polymer clay here and uh, this is uh, Sculpey 3 brand and we're going to go ahead and get started now you do want to condition the clay you want to knead it and that mixes up all the ingredients and gets it uh, sculpting and, uh, and baking right uh, when, it, when you bake it. And we're going to start off with a ball. Now I did the conditioning uh, mostly before, uh, before turning on the camera. So I'm going to start off with a ball. And I do recommend getting online. If you don't have pictures of seal, seals, lots of pictures of seals, their faces, their bodies, their flippers. If you don't have that. You should get online and do a search for sea lions, both in sculpture and life. And, you know, take a look at some pictures and use them as a guide. Now, once I've got a ball, I'm going to start rolling one end a little bit, holding my hands like this. And I'm going to start creating a little bit of a cone shape. And this will be to start to... Uh, form the shape of the tail or the, the body of the uh, seal. I'm just going to take that a little ways that way. Now I'm going to come around to the other side and start rolling it to form the neck and eventually the head of the, uh, of the sea lion. And this is where, you know, looking at pictures can really help. And see, I'm just rolling it. And then I'll pull the, uh, pull the head up. This is going to be the head here. And I've got it coming up now. So here we have the body down here. Just starting to shape it. And I'm going to put my thumb up underneath there and just kind of pull down to, to start forming the head of the, of the sea lion or the seal. I think they're about the same thing. And now I'm going to roll this this way a little bit further. And uh, to add life to the piece, I'm going to start to kind of turn the tail a little bit. Actually, the, we should call this a tail end. I'm not an expert on seal anatomy, obviously. But this is so that this is the body coming down to the back end. And then I'm going to turn his, his head this way also. And then to slim it down, I can roll it just lightly in the middle. And this kind of gives us the shape that we want to have. Now, another thing you can do is you can sort of just gently squeeze and pull to elongate the body if you want to. You can take a, a piece of paper and uh, put it down for your workspace so that the uh, seal doesn't uh, stick to the table. And the other thing you can do is you can just gently take hold of it and you can twist it like this. 
while pressing down and that will make the bottom of it more flat for you to be able to uh, stand him up on his own. Now we're going to work on his face and uh, I'm just going to bring it out a little bit longer by just squeezing it here like this. Trying to look at it from all directions so that it's consistent all the way around in uh, shape and size. Just sort of smoothing that out there. Now some seals, I mean there's different types of seals, so I think that some have longer noses and some have shorter noses. Now I'm going to take a ball tool here. And uh, I'm just going to start to put the indentation in for an eye socket right about there. And this will also give me um, some basic uh, look of the face. Coming over to the other side now and I'm adding an eye and I want it to be at the same height as this one. So I'm and when I put the, the ball tool into the, into the uh, hole, I'm, I'm turning it. It just makes it go in easier. And also helps it come out easier. Now I'm just going to pull a little bit more on the nose to bring it out a little further. And then touch it with my thumb on the tip to kind of dull it a little bit. Now before I do any more detail on the eyes, I'm going to start to uh, detail the nose a little bit. So I'm going to use this tool here to define the nostrils. That's the basic shape of a nostril on a seal. So when you press on one, sometimes it will deform the other. So you have to go back and forth until you get the look you want. Now I feel like I want to try to, um, this is, oh, by the way, I should tell you, I've, I don't think I've ever made a seal before. Now I do have a bunch of pictures in front of me, so I'm hoping that will help me uh, do this. And, and, I, and I do believe I can teach you how to make one just like I'm doing now. But uh, this is new to me as well. Okay, so... I'm going to use a sharper tool. This one's a little bit sharper. And I'm going to put the uh, indentation in for the mouth, just drawing a slight line. I really love the seals. I, I think they're just beautiful creatures. And I've wanted to make one, and I've been looking at pictures of them. And really the motivation was this person asking me to, to do a, a video on it. Otherwise, I don't know if I would have done it. That's how it is with me sometimes. I have ideas that I want to make things, but I don't follow through. And I think a lot of people face that. So I'm going to take 
a little bit of clay, a little ball of clay, and I want to try to um, form the lower jaw a little bit. Using just a ball of clay and then just putting it in place and sculpting away here. And I think uh, I'm gonna, I may, I may obscure the nose a little bit, but I'm going to take a little noodle of clay, and put it up here at the center of the nose, like that, and bring it down to make the upper lip. It just will look more lively if I do that. See? I'm going to do the same thing with this noodle of clay. Starting at the center of the nose, just below it. This is why I didn't detail the eyes yet, because I I didn't want to you know, mess them up out while I'm working on it. But I wanted to get them in place so I could see, you know, the face as it, sh it should start to develop. So that is uh, the that lip upper lip is a little bit off center from the nose, so I'm going to put a little marking there. I'm just going to try to even it up a little bit. Now I'm going to, as you can see, there's a little bit of ridge where I added a lip, and I'm just going to press in on that and just um, try to form that back down to where it's level, a level plane with the rest of the face. You see what I'm doing? I'm using the tools, I'm using my fingers, and it's coming it's coming together. It looks pretty good so far. He may not be a perfect seal, but I think he'll be pretty good. Now I'm just going to take my uh, sculpting tool and just clean it up down here a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is take a little bit of clay here and just I just want to beef up that lower jaw just a little bit so I'm going to put it right about there see where I put it now I'm just going to smooth it in blend it in And 
and then just uh, stroked it up under the lip like that. It does take patience, but and this one is taking a little bit more patience than usual, mainly because I haven't made one before. Now I'm just going to push these lips in a little bit. And now I'll go back and just um, touch up the nose a little. And there we go. So I think that's pretty close. Put him down here so you can see what he looks like. I'll move his head back up a little bit. Now I'm going to add his eyes. And see how one eye is kind of forward of the other one? This one's forward of the other one. I want to fix that. So I'm going to take a little ball of clay, fill the eye, eye uh, socket up, and just kind of pat it and make it um, nice and even and, and smooth again there. Patting is a good way to smooth things, by the way. Instead of rubbing your hand over it like this, patting it like this. And I'll check it to make sure that it's fairly even. And I'm going to define the forehead slightly. Some seals don't really have a forehead. This, this seal is going to have a little bit of one. Okay, now I've got that in place the way I want it. And I'm going to set my tool where I think it needs to go. And I'm going to just start to do the indentation. I'm going to check it to make sure it's the same height. And it's the same location on the, on the head. And that the distance is good. Like that. Now I do want the eye sockets to be the same depth, so you want to try for that as well. I'll lay that down for just a minute and I'm going to start working on the eyeball. So I've got a little tiny ball of clay here. I'm going to set it in the eye socket just to see how it looks. And then I'll pull it out, set it on the table, and make another one just like it. Okay, so I've got both eyeballs made. And now I'm going to put them in the eye sockets. This is something that I want to do together. So I'm doing one there, the other one here. I want to make sure everything is right. This this one here seems a little big. So I'm going to take it out, pinch a little off, re-roll it, and then put it back in. And that looks good. Now, uh, if you watched my videos before, you know that I like to put pupils in the eyeballs. And the reason why is because if you don't put anything in the eyeballs and you just leave them blank like that, to me, it, look, it doesn't look right. So, um, what I do is I take a small tool like this and I just gently press in while turning slightly to create a little uh, a little uh, 
I people. Like that. And you can make them a little bit deeper. The deeper they are, the more shallow they'll cause. The, the light will shallow in the in the eye sockets, giving them the look of color. Or not eye sockets, but uh, pupils. Now we need to make eyelids. And so what I'll do is I'll take a noodle of clay like that. And put it over top of the pupil. And then very gently, I'll smooth or uh, blend the top of the eyelid into the head. Like right here. There we go. Now I'll make another one for the other side. And I want to position the other one in the same place. I will want to position the other eyelid in the same location as the first one. Now, if you notice, if you look really close, you can see what would be the whites of his eyes appearing but before the, the, the bottom of the uh, eyelids. So what I like to do is I like to take that out by just gently taking the tool and pushing the pupil up underneath the eyelid. So he, he just looks more relaxed. That's the idea. Now I'm going to take my tool and I'm also going to just smooth the eyelids where they join the uh, top of the uh, bridge of the nose there also. Any place where it's joining the head or the side of the head is a good thing to smooth that out. And that's what we've got. I think he's a pretty cute seal. Okay, so now we can start to work on the flippers and positioning him again to um, be looking somewhat lifelike anyways. That's the idea here. Okay, I'm just um, now shaping the first fin that's going to go on the other side, but I, I wanted to try to get an idea of, you know, how to make it since this is pretty new to me too. Um, but it's going to be like this shape, so it'll go right like that, something like that on there. And um, so we're going to use that as a model for the other one, even though it's going to be opposite. Um, I've been kind of messing around here trying to find a, the right size and all that. So let's see what we can do here. So almost, uh, they almost look like little... In a way, almost little seals or birds or something like that, they kind of have that shape. This is like a little leg, and then this, the flipper is on that. 
and um, so as I start to form it and shape it mostly just by squeezing at this point just squeezing it with my fingers as it becomes longer and, and, and if it ends up too big then I just pinch off a little bit at the end which seems to work pretty good and on the on this the ed uh, the edge uh, leading back to the uh, back of the body, um, you can pinch this, and that will give it the kind of an, uh, a sharp edge here. And you can smooth that with your thumb. I'm excited about this little seal. I try to put things in my art shop because my studio is just so full of things. <laughs> But I don't know if you'll see this in my art shop because, uh, not for a while anyways, because uh, I really like it a lot. And uh, it's kind of my first one. I don't know if I want to sell it. <laughs> but, um, but you should visit my art shop sometimes. There's a whole bunch of things in there. Some really fun things and uh, the prices are really good. And, you know, it's really kind of a fun place to visit. So, so now I'm just uh, I want to pinch that edge going back to the uh, towards the back of the body. Check my size. And just try to match them up. I think somebody else might have asked me to make a sea lion a while back. And to be honest with you, I was a little, excuse me, I was a little bit intimidated by it, the whole idea of making a sea lion. Um, but, you know, that's the same thing that a lot of people face. They, they don't want to make something because they're afraid that they won't be able to do it or it won't turn out right or um, it's very human to think that the best thing to do is just go for it because you'll be really proud of yourself probably and you'll probably do a great job the main thing is if you're new to this is practice practice as much as you can now I think there's still this one is a little long so let me uh just take a little bit off. It's easy to slim it down because all you have to do is take a little bit off. And this one, now I'm going to match this up to that one. It was really fun this morning going online and looking at seals, pictures of seals. Um, they're just so, so cute. Really beautiful animals. Now what I'm going to use here is a little bit of uh, Sculpey uh, Bacon Bond. a little bit on the leg of the fin here and press it into place kind of like if you can see this is at this point here it shouldn't be really too much forward of that it should be right about there And then we'll turn around here and uh, put some bacon bond on here. And then looking at it from above, we can see where it's positioned on the body. And then we can bring it down to the front and move it back to where it has to be or, you know, move it to where it has to be. And 
and then blend it in all the way around. You also can look at it from the bottom to see that it's in a good place. I'm working on just um, positioning and smoothing it out and trying to get his his um, fins to look um, or I call them flippers fins flippers um, to a nice position look natural nice and natural and then we'll uh, in a minute we'll start the uh, the back pins okay so now we're at the um, back end and working on the uh, back flippers I made one that's about the right size or so and I'm working on another one here I roll a uh, ball start for the ball I'm gonna take a little bit of clay off that and uh, then I roll it into an oblong shape so it's about the same length as that and then I'm just gonna uh, flatten it out a little bit And so that's the shape of it there. And then I'm going to bring the uh, seal around here. And um, I mean, it just depends on how you're positioning it. You can position it pretty much any way you want. You can have it, the legs cut or the flippers come forward, or you can have them go back. That one picture I have here <clears throat> has uh, a look like that. And uh, if you if you want to use bacon bond, you can. It, it helps to have it if 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 you miss it. That's all right. Like I just did. Um, I just missed it. And I'm just um, <clears throat> patting and smoothing it out a little bit. And I've got uh, a tool here. I'm going to just cut it in and uh, do a little blending there at the front where it joins. The flipper joins the body. And then um, there's a little tiny, tiny tail um, on them. Very, very small. Let me take a little ball of clay about like that. And uh, put it on the, on the back here. That is something that could, you know, break off pretty easily. So you might want to um, curve it up or um, just, uh, you know, have it, don't have it just off hanging off by itself, you know, just bring it up closer to the body if you can. Okay, so we're getting ready to put the ears on now. And um, they can be shaped like a cone shape. They can be shaped like a little C almost. They're a little cubby ear. So we just um, 
It's gotta be really small though. Just a hint. Um, so just behind the eye, a little ways behind the eye, maybe right about there. I'm just gonna uh, kind of start to press it in place and then I've got the other ear here. And uh, when I, you know, again, look, looking for positioning to see that it's going in the same place as the other ear. And then uh, blend it in all the way around. So after I blend it, then I'm going to just sort of pull it down a little bit so it's So it's kind of like that. I'm going to take a little bit off of that one because I think it's a little bit too big. And I think that's about it. Now, um, if you watch my videos, you know I like to leave the sculpting marks in my pieces um, because I just like the way the finishes look on it. I'm going to do, even though seals are oftentimes black, they're oftentimes gold also, and they're oftentimes white, and sometimes they're mottled gray, and I think it will be nice to do my bronze finish on it. So I'm going to show that finish in just a minute how to do that. Um, I like, uh, if I made the seal all smooth, the, the bronze finish would not look to me near as good, so I'm going to leave it kind of rough, but I am going to go back and just make sure that I have all my joints are, are good and that I you know, blended pro properly and, uh, that my piece is not all lumpy and bumpy and, um, and I'm going to just, uh, go back and just make sure it's all finished properly I'm gonna sign it and then uh, we'll come back and put a finish on it okay we're back and we're gonna put uh, a bronze finish on the sculpture I'm using a product called Pearl X pigments and uh, the color that we'll be using is antique bronze it's a finish I really like a lot um, and I'm gonna show you how to do it so I dip my finger in the bronze and um, swirl my thumb on it to kind of subdue it. I don't really want it really bright. I just want it subdued. And then I just slide my finger over the sculpture to highlight uh, the sculpture. It's a very, um, actually very realistic looking bronze finish. So if you went and looked at a bronze uh, sculpture somewhere in an art gallery or something like that, you'd probably see this type of look. Just, just really trying to highlight the sculpture, highlight the um, high points. I want to get most of it really subdued on my fingers. Now you can make it look really bright and gold and all that sort of thing. In the video description down below the video, there will be two videos on how to smooth polymer clay. You can take a look at those.
It's got a little purple on there actually. It's alright. Now what I do if um, if I can't get all the detail with my fingers that I want to get, like the eyes, the eyes for instance, I'll get my brush a little bit wet, dab off the excess, get some bronze on my brush, wipe off the excess off the brush. See how I'm doing that on the table? And then I'll just go over the eyes a little bit with it. This makes them brighten up a little bit so that you can see the eyes a little bit better. And if there's any other place. The other thing I try to do always is get the, uh, the bottom of the sculpture. So that the finish has continuity. There you go. Very pretty finish. Now once you have your sculpture finished and you're ready to bake it, you can go to the video description down below the video and you'll find the baking instructions. Just follow those instructions to bake your sculpture. Okay, here we are with our completed seal, sea lion. He turned out really, actually pretty good. I really like this uh, little guy, for sure. I'm really glad I did it, and I really believe I'll probably be making more seals in the future. I have seals in my future, sea lions in my future. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. And um, give my um, video the thumbs up, and let me know what you think of it. Leave me a comment or question in the comment section. And um, I do uh, many, many videos. I do mostly polymer clay sculpture, but I also do wire sculpture and uh, self-hardening clay sculpture, or some people call it air dry clay. Um, tutorials and um, I even do some imaging um, of the image manipulation uh, for photographs uh, I have a few videos like that as well um, so definitely please subscribe I have uh, over uh, 600 videos on my channel thank you so much for watching be creative have fun and have an outstanding day thank you thank you thank you